Guys, if you're wondering, the three street names that that parallel the prison, um, they're not called uh, Fitz or Percy. They're not called Fitz or Percy like in the TV show. They're called Woodruffed and I'm not sure what the other street name is called, but anyway, they're not called Fitz or Percy like in the TV show. Um, it's uh, Woodruff and Collins is the street names, um, not Fitz or Percy like in the TV show. What's going on guys? My name is Harmon. Today's episode is all about the old abandoned prison here in Joliet, Illinois. This is the famous prison that you've probably seen on the show Prison Break. This is where this is where they filmed it. If you love the show Prison Break, you'll you'll get a kick out of this. If you haven't seen this, that show, you'll still enjoy it because it's a cool looking abandoned prison. And they built it like 145 years ago. It's an old prison and it got abandoned in I believe 2003. Right before they started shooting Prison Break basically is when it got abandoned. Again, they used it for the TV show Prison Break, but for the most part, the main majority chunk of filming was season one that they shot here. So it looks like the Blues Brothers was filmed here while this was an active prison. That is something I had no idea. So they filmed the Blues Brothers here while this was an active prison. That's amazing. There's a John Belushi right there. That is so crazy. So he, him and Dan Aykroyd were, were here filming their movie. That's amazing. So the one cool thing about doing um, the self-guided tour here is obviously I can just go wherever I want and I don't have a billion people getting in the way of the shot. Again, I, I'm doing my best to try to, to match up different shots with the TV show Prison Break. I want to try to make sure I get as much of the different areas as I can. Here's some old, old weightlifting equipment, guys. Look at this. These are old, old. These look like they've been from like the 80s or 70s or something. I mean, they've been out here resting in the sun for however many years, so who knows, but that is so cool. I'm guessing this is empty. Do you guys remember the scene where basically Michael Schofield is uh, trying to open a yellow, uh, kind of like a sewer pipe, and he's like struggling trying to open it up. That way the water would flow out in the sewers below. And I remember the camera sweeping around like this little hill, and the, the, the yellow sewer thing was like right here. Um, I just distinctly remember seeing this like little hill and then a little sewer thing.
So what's throwing me off guys is the fact that I, they basically tore down all the inner fences where you know the inmates would walk a certain way back to the cell houses, into the yard and so forth. Um, they tore all those out and so it's really throwing me off on all the different scenes they had. All right guys, so of course in front of me, this is where the cells were. Um, they had several different uh, cell blocks. Um, once you step out of the sun and you enter uh, into the doorway here, it drops like 25 degrees. Um, it's pretty hot out as you can tell. And you get it down in the cool areas, the shade, and it feels nice. It definitely, definitely smells like an abandoned prison. Um, has that musty, musty smell. Here is one of the cell blocks. Again, I wish I could go actually inside inside, but unfortunately this is as good as we can get for now. You can tell that in 18 years since this has been abandoned, it has really fallen into pretty bad disarray. There's only one scene that I can kind of picture, and it's when Michael Schofield first gets to prison. He's with his cellmates, Fernando Sucre, and he and Fernando are hanging out in the yard. And uh, Fernando asks him, hey Fish, uh, why are you so interested in, in Lincoln Burroughs? And Michael Schofield's like, because he's my brother. And that scene, I believe they show Lincoln Burroughs in 
basically like what the the recreation yard is, but for the condemned prisoners, the death row prisoners, they had like their own separate little uh, recreation yard outside that was fenced off. And so I believe that's straight in front of me. So yeah, so I believe the angle of the camera was facing this way and Lincoln Burroughs would have been inside the little fence area. Of course, there would have been like a fence right here where Michael Schofield and Fernando and of course, all the other inmates would have been behind. Look how nasty that razor wire is. Does not look like something you want to get stabbed with. So uh, this looks like it would have been the chapel. Yep. Uh, this would have been the baseball field. So that kind of helps put everything into perspective a little bit. Um, the fence was basically right here. These are the poles for it. So that was a backstop. Okay, so the, the operating of the prison was basically 1850... 1858, correct. 1858, okay. Mm -hmm. And it closed, was it like early 2002? Correct, 2002. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the, the shooting of Prison Break um, was, do you think, maybe 2003 or four? I believe right so after that, up until about 2006, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And they did, you know, they we can actually walk by the chapel. I'm sure you've even walked by it already. I know there were some scenes that were filmed in there. Mm. Uh, just during some of our site restorations, we actually picked up some pieces of the scripts and everything that were left oh, behind. Really? Some oh, were in the chapel, cool. some were in the admin. Um, that's awesome, actually. Along with their dietary habits, so we know they enjoyed <laughs> some uh, local cuisine, <laughs> oh, so it's kind of fun. That is fun. Well, we did do executions here once upon a time, okay. and then the chair actually did move to Stateville permanently, oh, and they? then they continued on with the electrocutions until lethal injection. Um, again, I'm not quite sure of those dates. Man, 
18 years definitely has done a number on this place though, like in yeah. terms of like the rapid decay. They do say in, in historic preservation, you know, a building that's unoccupied for one year almost ages at 10. Now, there's oh. no science behind it, but it's just one of those. That's kind of what they figured you know, out. Oh, wives' tales and you know, uh, just those cold appeal sayings. But it's really true. If you if you've ever been in an abandoned building, mm. it feels like it's been abandoned for centuries, but it might only be a few years just because of it. There's yeah. just something about the energy of like people actually being in a building. You know, it's heated, it's cooled. You know, you're kind of cleaning up after yourself. You're maintaining the building's atmosphere and environment, right. and then to completely abandon it. That would, it really does kind of take its toll on a building, so. That's true. Plus, I'm sure, you know, constant maintaining a place and then all of a sudden you drop it and you don't, I'm sure it just kind of rapidly. Exactly. Probably forces the issue, maybe. And you can peek into the different rooms, too. Um, some of them, it looks just like uh, the staff person just up and left. Um, oh, really? To one room where you can see all the x-ray machinery. Um, oh, no way. And they're still labeling on some of the cabinets and cupboards. Um, That's actually pretty cool. And this is one where, wow, uh, the graffiti abatement team has really done a wonderful job on the exterior. I want to say we've removed close to 1,000 tags and markings so far. I was actually on site back in 2007. Oh, when really? I was first actually hired by the museum, uh, there was a fundraising effort out here to kind of say, hey, here's this abandoned prison site. This new TV show is filmed here. What else can we do with this property? Oh, right. Um, so by 2007, it still looked pretty decent. Yeah, like they, people just got up from their desk and left. And it was a little dirty and, you know, grubby here and there, but all the glass was in take, or I'm sorry, intact. Mm. There was no graffiti. No, by the time we came back on property in 2011, it kind of looked like this. I mean, so literally even from seven to 11, just those few short years, there was mass, mass decay. Oh gosh. So yeah, so just in that short period. And then of course from 11 to 17, right before we started getting, uh, being able to do tours out here, um, there was three attempts, uh, arson attempts, so we lost a couple of buildings. One of them was that records building, which, as I said earlier, they shot that oh, uh, the... scene of him tunneling out to the floor. Oh, right, okay. Um, and sadly, that was also delivered, as I said, the records building, so you can imagine there was actual records and paperwork and documentation in there that have sadly been lost. Oh, so like basically every, like most everything from when the prison started to Correct. like, oh mm -hmm. wow, whoa. And it's been featured on uh, Ghost Adventures, I believe was the show. Um, oh, and okay. some paranormal encounters with that machine in this room. So you can imagine some of the horrors that this building in general would have bear witness to. Yeah, I was gonna say there's probably been lots of uh, terrible stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Because right now this is like the general um, ward, so obviously your x-ray equipment here, your, you know, if you need a quick stitch, a bandage, maybe you need to fix a broken limb or something, this would have been this floor. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why, but it's just cool seeing like these old, like, the, like the lights and stuff. Oh, definitely, definitely. And so like I said, with the wear and tear, you know, um, things are starting to fall from ceilings. Which is why, unfortunately, we don't go to the upper floors. Yeah, it's just way too unsafe. Yeah. Alright, so I was told that this was the building. This was where they they used the inside and they replicated the cell blocks inside gymnasium. Um, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. I, I would never have guessed they, they filmed that here. I thought, oh, they must have filmed it somewhere else. But yep, they built it right inside. Same thing with like, the Blues Brothers scene where they're all dancing in the cafeteria. So somewhere in this building is where the 
the scene where they they were trying to dig out and they they dug a, a hole into the floor and I think the scene was it was like a guards room I believe that they were digging in and somewhere in this building is where that took place they filmed that scene here So it was segregation, but was it also death row, like where they kept them? Correct. So the whole first floor, yeah, originally was solitary confinement or seg. Okay. Um, and just not only for the worst of the worst characters, but also people who were, you know, broke the prison rules. So mm -hmm. if you didn't show up to work, you hurt another inmate, you're, you know, you're breaking the oh. rules, you got thrown into, sometimes they call it the hole. Oh, right. We just call it uh, segregation cells. Um, okay. And then when we did have the death penalty, the second row was then reserved for the death row inmates. So okay. um, imagine, yep, yeah, that's where you were housed. And then the building actually continued for another several feet. Oh, did it? And then there was a stairwell that actually led you down into the uh, electric chair, electrocution chamber. Oh, but was that all? That was um, all removed. I, I'm not quite sure. I want to say sometime and maybe the... They did a big remodel project in the late 50s, so it might have been removed during that time. Okay. But to your left that you were looking at, that actually is one of the original, nine, um, sorry, 1858 cells. Oh, so this? as I said, yep, they did a uh, remodeled in uh, the 1950s. Oh, wow. And they made the cells just a tad bit bigger, but if you can imagine that, <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, four by four by seven, yeah, it, there's not much room at all. I mean, you think it's bad enough for one person to be in there? Imagine two, if not three people in there. Oh my goodness. Was there like a, do they have any like toilet or sink back then, do you think? Oh, great story. And as I said, yeah, I'm sorry. It was seven feet deep, four feet wide, seven feet tall. I just want to make sure I get my numbers correct. Okay. Um, no, so there was no plumbing until 1957. Oh. I vividly remember that date. 1957. Um, so yeah, you only got to see one hour of light a day. Your rations were reduced. I believe it was like two ounces of water and two slices of bread. You got barely fed anything. But as you can see, the cells are much larger. So I don't know what was better to be starving in a larger cell or to be cramped in a tiny little cell too. Yeah. Your codes, it does have a, a view of what death row the upper floor would have looked like. I mean, it looks exactly the same. The only thing is it has a domed uh, roof on it, and there is, or once upon a time, there was a beautiful... Look like... Oh, is that the one with the chair? Yeah. yeah. We, we created an event last year. Uh, we do think that the original, I believe there was only one chair ever created, uh, is at Stateville. Oh, it's still there. We do believe so. Okay. Gosh, that is a creepy looking chair though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, as I said, we've seen a couple pictures, okay. it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Now this door is actually one of the original uh, cell doors that would have been here. Oh, the, okay, it's the original door. Okay. Correct, one of the punishments then also in solitary was to be chained to your door. Oh. So imagine like your arms are hooked, probably like close to your head or above your head through the chains there and you're pretty much forced into standing position for several hours at a time. I, I mean, I agree with that. Yeah, at least try. It might not be forgiven, but at least you tried at to least, do your best to. Right. At least you, yeah, you gave it your best shot. Well, that's cool. I'm glad that you tried to kind of keep it safe and preserve there. Yeah. Anyways, I think we probably will, you know. Now, in, in the show, I don't remember there being so many like little buildings inside the complex. Like when you see the show, it looks like it's just a huge open yard and then like the cell blocks. And so a lot of these little buildings are just, I think they're throwing me off. Back when this prison was up and running, this whole complex was its own like mini city. They had like, as you can see in front of me, they had their own fire department. They had like their own water tower behind this. 
they think they grew their own vegetables and, and some food. So they really try to kind of self-sustain themselves here at the prison. Um, so it's cool to see there's like outlines on the wall and they, the outlines, of course, if you don't know, is like to make sure that each piece of equipment is put back every single day. As you can see, there's like, you know, different tools and they have the outlines. So that way when the, you know, when all the, the guys were done working for the day, they would put all the tools back and the officers would make sure that all the tools were, were put back where they should be. So I guess the fire department here uh, started around 1893, it says up there. And uh, looks like it eventually kind of dissolved and they stopped using it as a fire department, but then they turned it into like a storehouse and then even eventually like a, an area where they could do different uh, programs, like uh, different school programs. So it sounds like uh, only 50 years after the prison was in operation, so that would put it early 1900s um, as it was built uh, 1850s or so, um, they already were seeing signs of of deterioration uh, of tuberculosis spreading rampant through here. So this is Nathan Leopold. He he entered into the prison system, got into Juliet, 1924. So next to me is the the boiler room slash powerhouse. So this building um, inside is where it basically powered the entire prison. I'm assuming uh, running water and all that kind of stuff, all of it was powered through um, this building here in the, basically the center of the compound. Looks like this building had a bad fire. That is so unfortunate. It looks like a, looks like a potential arson or something. Uh, but who knows, this building's really old, so. The architecture alone, I think makes this place a top abandoned prison in the United States. So I normally don't talk about my personal life too much on camera, but I just thought it was fitting since I'm in this environment. I actually worked at a prison in Washington State for a few years. That prison is pretty old too, not, not nearly this old, but it's giving me the same vibes of when I worked at the prison.
So if you like crime related videos, make sure you hit subscribe, um, turn the little bell on. And again, until next time guys, thank you so much for watching. My name's Harmon. I'll see you on the next one.